Well, with week six behind us, it's time to, of course, hand out our honorable teammates and reportable players for both NA and EU. Starting off in NA, it's got to go to someone on 100 Thieves for their impressive 2 0 week. And the most impressive player on that squad this week was Afro Moo. On the playmaking supports, this guy just seemed to not be able to miss a hook on Thresh <laughs> or Blitzcrank. He had the aimbot on. Aimbot on. I didn't know we were going to say that. That is great. He absolutely had the aimbot on. Afro Moo looking like the Afro Moo of old, hitting all the hooks with Thresh, getting the Blitzcrank hooks into you. That's what I tell you. Every time why I hate seeing champions like Blitzcrank so much is because he could miss all the hooks, but then he hits you with that one and it's game over. Afro Moo absolutely stepping up this week. That Thresh pick into C9 was massive for them, helped turn things around for the team. And definitely, again, picking up that win against C9 can't underestimate how much confidence that gave the rest of 100 Thieves moving forward. And definitely, again, you saw it here in this match against FlyQuest where they were rolling, picking up a 2-0 week. Afro Moo, huge, uh, huge part of that, getting my thumbs up. Yeah, and you know this team's only going to look stronger when he's able to, you know, instigate these team fights and kind of just control these team fights. You saw those numbers early game. It was all playing through Aframu. He was getting involved in every single one of those kills. So shout outs to Mr. Aframu for 100 Thieves 2 a week. Uh, let's go over to EU where it was the marksman for Fnatic. Listen, you could basically give this to Caps or Reckless, but I'm giving it to Reckless just because he basically had two game-winning uh, plays and fights for them in both their games. But I mean, these numbers are absurd. 26 KD8, that's not bad. Uh, contributed to first blood in both games and over 660 damage a minute. Again, three times the damage dealt the champions that Hjarnan did in that G2 matchup. That is absurd. People people want to criticize Reckless, you know, saying like, oh, like, oh, he's just a KDA player. He's no This looked like a KDA yeah, player. You want to talk like a KDA player? I'll take the KDA player with a 26-0 KDA. That's the guy I want on my team. Reckless absolutely was fantastic this week. He was massive for Fnatic, and this was, and I will say, it wasn't the hardest week for Fnatic, but this was definitely some huge games for them that they needed to get the victories on. Definitely giving them the advantage heading towards the playoffs. Really loved what he brought in. And again, he's the star for Fnatic. Bringing it this time really stepped it up. And I feel bad just giving that award to Reckless because, again, Caps had an absurd KDA on Vigar and Victor. Champions are not seen as much in that mid lane. He was fantastic in both games and probably has been the MVP for Fnatic so far in the split. But last week, give it to Reckless. Yeah, I could definitely see you giving it to Caps too, but for me, it's gotta be that 26 KDA. That guy was so clean. I loved it. Yeah, and he had the most damage dealt to champions in both games for Fnatic. Uh, so, kudos to them. Another 2 a week for Fnatic. Seven in a row for the former EULCS champs. Uh, now, you gotta give praise to the players who are good, but you gotta give a bit of criticism to the guys who struggled, and no one has struggled more this split in the NALCS than CLG, which is something I didn't think I'd say considering the Golden Guardians have won three of five. <laughs> it's CLG struggling, and the man who struggled the most on that squad last week was Darshan in that top lane. He got first blooded in both those games, a .8 oh. KDA and a not impressive damage per minute. Rough week for Darshan. Yeah, definitely was one of these times where you could really look at the roster and kind of you go into that post-game report screen, you look at it and you go, we got nothing from this guy. And it's like, it's it's hard because you don't feel that way about Darshan. He, he's a good guy, a good teammate, contributes a lot, but then just his performance this week was absolutely not of that. He was not getting the job done for them and was a real hindrance for his team trying to find any type of advantages or leads really not the performance and especially not at this time for CLG. Yeah, I mean, so far this split, it's kind of been their solo laners for a lot of it they, that they're expecting a lot out of, out of. And you saw a lot of these ganks, he almost just seemed completely unaware and wasn't ready for it. Uh, I don't know if that's just team communication, not knowing where opposing junglers are, but CLG, they got way bigger issues than just Darshan's play this past week. They got issues across the board. Yeah, definitely a lot of things that need to see some improvement. You know, someone that I thought had a lot of potential after last uh, last split, who he has really not shown a strong performance in the mid lane yet. Darshan obviously not getting it done in the top. Rainover not looking as strong as you would really hope for Rainover of old to be 
And then again, the synergy in the bot lane with Stixay and Bifrost hasn't really appeared so far. So I think that there's a lot of improvements that need to be made with CLG to get to these results that a lot of people expected. A lot of uh, changes, probably some over the split changes that yeah. they'll need to figure things out. Uh, out in EU, it was Vitality. You never thought you'd see someone from Vitality on oh, this not list. After the not 7-0 start. Not Crazy. on the reportable list, but it is the man in the jungle, God Gilius, who had a very rough week in it's not two. not because he's been toxic. That's not why we're reporting this well, guy. He's been toxic to his <laughs> team in-game. 0.8 KDA to match that oh. of Darshan. That damage per minute was disgusting. 120. He did less damage than both supports in both Come games on, this week for Gilius. Vitality. And the boys in yellow got zero dragons this week. And that, that's not always on the jungler, but, no. I will, but I will say every time that I've played and I've looked and I'm like, oh, the other team has three infernals and we have none. Oh, you know where my blame usually first goes? The jungler. And so hey. not always fair, not always the right reasoning, but there's a lot of factors going into it. And Gilius was not getting those factors his way, feeding, not picking up objectives for your team. That's the type of thing that lends you on the report list. Yeah, and I mean, especially when you are a guy who likes to be very vocal, although we haven't heard much out of him in the past two weeks when the kind team's of a, been you don't struggling. Really, you usually don't hear from people a lot when the results aren't going their way. Yeah, but I mean, he's got some of the highest death share in the league now going forward. And I think Jizuki and Mini True Packs actually looked pretty decent uh, this week, at least in their second game of the week. But Vitality has a lot of issues right now as well, and it's kind of hard to pinpoint everything, but one of them is definitely Gilius feeding. Yeah, that was definitely, uh, for me at least, uh, specifically in that Misfits matchup that they lost, a real clear play that they got outplayed in the jungler position, and that was one thing that you know led to such a snowball for Misfits to get ahead and end the game on them. So definitely something that if Vitality wants to get back to those winning ways that they had shown earlier in the split, need to have Gilius step it back up again. Yeah, and you never know who's going to have a great week or a terrible week in the LCS, but uh, that's why we come back here and break it all down for our Honors and Reports. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.